Okay, let's sit and meditate for a few minutes. Hainam Pavana Sapakta. Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to follow the breath all the way in, all the way out. And notice what kind of breathing feels comfortable right now. Sometimes the body likes long breathing, sometimes it likes short. Sometimes fast, sometimes slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. It's up to you to decide what you want to stay with, what feels good right now. And it's easy to, stay, to keep track of. If it's too light, sometimes it's hard to keep track of. So find what's just right for you right now. And also spread thoughts of goodwill. This is goodwill for yourself while you're breathing like this in a comfortable way. You're creating a sense of well-being inside. And then you want that goodwill to spread out to others, too. Realization that you want a happiness that doesn't harm anybody. Because that's the only kind of happiness that's safe. If your happiness depends on other people being deprived of something, it's not going to last for a long time. So you have to make sure, that on the one hand, that you find your resources for happiness inside, and two, that you're very careful not to act in any way that's going to harm anybody. This is why we take the precepts to remind ourselves of what kind of behavior is harmful. Killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. This spreads harm around, both for ourselves and for other people. You need to learn how to motivate yourself to stick with harmless behavior, because there's a lot of times of harmful behavior that may not be covered with the precepts, a little bit more refined than that. And you're the one who should notice and when you're doing something, is it harming other people or is it not? Now, harming here doesn't mean hurting their feelings. It just means doing them actual harm, harming their attitudes, harming their understanding, harming their behavior, as well as harming their, their belongings and their life. So you're going to be very careful. And this is why the Buddha recommends two qualities, is that these actually are treasures. One is shame and the other is compunction. Shame is the sense that something is beneath you. It's not a sign of lowest self-esteem, it's actually a sign of high self-esteem. You raise your mind to a higher level that you want to be harmless, but then you stoop down and do something that would actually cause harm and you know it's going to cause harm. That's something you should be ashamed of. And then compunction is actually caring about the results of your actions. You see that certain actions lead to harm, and you may say, well, harm is going to be a long time down the road, I don't care right now. That apathy is the kind of attitude you don't want to encourage, so compunction is the opposite of apathy. It means you really care. You're concerned about the results of your actions, and you really do want to be scrupulous in what you're doing. So these two activities, the meditation on the one side and the developing of these, development of these two treasures of the mind on the other side, are what protect your mind. The meditation gives you a sense of well-being inside, so you're not so hungry to go outside and find your happiness in whatever way possible outside here. You're going to exercise some more restraint. And at the same time, when you have a good sense of shame and a good sense of compunction, it means that you're going to abstain from actions that will cause harm. So later you don't have to have regret about those things. It makes the concentration practice a lot easier when you don't have a lot of regret hanging around in the mind. So as soon as you focus on the breath, these things will start coming up. There are cases of people who've done something really harmful in the past, and they say, you know, I wish I had a million dollars to go back and undo that. Well, no, no amount of money is going to go back and undo that. But if you had the sense of shame and compunction to begin with, so you didn't do it to begin with, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. This is why shame and compunction are worth more than a million dollars, more than any kind of money, because they save you from the things you're later going to regret. So these are two qualities that's wise to develop. And then, as the Buddha said, they are treasures. They're things that protect our wealth inside, our inner wealth of virtue, concentration, discernment. All the good things we develop in the mind, these, these two qualities protect them. At the same time, they protect society around us. We see people misbehaving every day, every day. If they had a sense of shame or compunction, they wouldn't, there are a lot of things they would not do. It's because of people's lack of shame, their shamelessness, that they can ha cause harm to other people. It's because they have no sense of compunction that they cause harm. You can't wait to go out and straighten out the rest of the world, but you can straighten out your own mind first and say, as far as this corner of the world, the corner you're responsible for, shame and compunction are going to be in charge of looking after your, your behavior to make sure that you don't think, do things that are harmful, things that you later regret. So even though we may not like our sense of shame, we feel that it keeps us constricted, actually it, it gives us a lot of freedom. The same with our sense of compunction. If you're careful about your actions, really are concerned about the results, you're going to be free from the kind of actions that would come back and harm you. So think of them as, a, as guardians of your freedom. 
that way you can find the happiness that you really want, happiness that is blameless, a happiness that is harmless, that no one's going to want to take away from you because it doesn't cause any harm to anybody at all. <laughs>